Hello, Crypto Finder crew. In the previous episode, we started from the very basics and learned what cryptocurrency is. In this video, we break down the two types of cryptocurrencies that exist and what their purpose is. So by the end of this video, my aim is to make you feel a lot more comfortable for when your crypto friends fire up a never ending conversation about how many million Shiba Inus they own. Just to be clear, the dog, not the dog, the token type. <laughs> So let's get right into it. First of all, there are two types of cryptocurrencies, coins and tokens. Now, cryptocurrency coins live on a network. Think of it as a very complex string of code that structures the coin's functionality, security features, and entire existence. Now, each coin has its own network that was developed from scratch with its own code. Now, as you can probably imagine, writing code to create an entire network is a very difficult and complex task. It takes some seriously smart people and problem-solving skills to do. And for this reason, there aren't actually that many networks or coins, maybe 10 or 15. Tokens, on the other hand, exist on top of these networks. Anyone can create a token with ease as it piggybacks off these crypto networks. You could, in theory, create a token in the matter of minutes. It's really that easy. Hence why there are so many cryptocurrencies out there and why it feels like a minefield when you start learning about it all. Just bear in mind that 80% of cryptocurrencies are either scams or pointless projects. Hence why it has a bad reputation. But if you look at the technology and invest in the right place, it can be very rewarding and very exciting. Bitcoin was the first generation of blockchain networks. Then came Ethereum, which uses a different consensus method, making it a lot faster, scalable, and efficient compared to Bitcoin. Although Bitcoin does have its strengths over Ethereum too. Then you've got networks like Litecoin, Cardano, Polkadot, Stellar, it goes on. Each network has its strengths and weaknesses but there aren't that many networks out there due to their complexity. Now, all these networks that I just mentioned are public and they target the general public as the end users. Bitcoin originated and helped popularize the distributed ledger technology. It's also known as a DLT. This technology removes the problems that come with centralization like our conventional banks have, including less security and transparency. DLTs don't store information in one single place, instead distributing it across a peer-to-peer -peer network. Its decentralized nature requires a method of verifying the authenticity of data. And that method is a consensus mechanism whereby participants in the blockchain reach an agreement on the current state of that ledger. And the two most common consensus methods used on the blockchain are proof of work and proof of stake. Now let's break these two down. Firstly, let me clear the air on what I mean by consensus. Think of it as an agreement. Say, 10 people have to agree on what color this dress is. To do this, there needs to be a rule that nine out of 10 people must vote that the dress is either black and blue or gold and white, which it's obviously black and blue, right? And the same happens on the blockchain. Computers, or nodes, have to come to a consensus on whether a transaction is valid or not. And to do this, they have to solve a cryptic puzzle. Think of it as a word puzzle, like Wordle, which if you're not familiar with, you have to guess a five letter word and you get six attempts. I promise I didn't discover that on TikTok. And say I'm playing against a group of friends and whoever figures out the word first wins. This requires time and energy and intelligence. Well, in the proof of work consensus model, computers have to do the same, but with a much more complex puzzle. And whichever computer has the most hashing power, which is the equivalent of our intelligence in the Wordle example, that computer is the most likely to solve that puzzle and gets to create the Bitcoin block containing the transactions to then verify them. And this is where you ask me, Cole, what the hell are blocks? Well, a block is a list of transactions in a certain period of time. These computers are rewarded with some Bitcoin for doing this entire process. 
Each block on the Bitcoin blockchain can contain of up to 500 transactions. It sounds complicated and tiring, right? Well, let's have a look at proof of stake, which is my preferred consensus model. Now, instead of consuming a crazy amount of hashing power and therefore energy in order to decrypt puzzles, verify transactions, proof of stake requires a cryptocurrency coin to be staked or locked. And that is to be able to process the transactions. The more you stake, the more likely you are to get to process these transactions. However, because a simple formula like that is quite biased, proof of stake has an element of randomness to make things a little bit more fair. So in a nutshell, the main difference between proof of work and proof of stake is how computers are selected to earn the right to create these blocks and verify the transactions and therefore be rewarded for that process. The reason I don't particularly like the proof of work mechanism is that it consumes so much pointless energy. Imagine all of these millions of computers on the network fighting, trying to figure out a puzzle, only to discover that one computer solved it and all that power wasted trying to solve it is basically wasted. Not gonna lie, that's a lot of energy gone. And in times like these that we're going through right now, with energy prices absolutely through the roof, I'm not a big fan. And for that reason, I invest in proof of stake coins only. Right, I think let's wrap things up before I move on to the next episode where I cover the safety aspect of cryptocurrencies and I explain why crypto is actually one of the most secure places to store your money in the world. But before I go, let me sum up what you have learned today. By now, you will know the difference between coins and tokens, what the blockchain distributed ledger technology aims to achieve and the differences between proof of work and proof of stake. If you have any questions on what I've just covered, then feel free to reach out to me in the comments below and I will do my best to answer. And by all means, do subscribe to the channel for more content like this. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.